Uh, and we want to say welcome to Man Up Monday for those guys get some playback. Man, thank y'all for always being uh, man willing to come and check out and listen. We pray that this is always an encouragement to you. So, hey, I told you last week that starting today over the next 14 weeks, we're going to have all our speakers that are going to be joining us uh, for our 2022 Men of Valor Conference are going to be sharing with us each week, and that starts today. So. Uh, if you follow us on all our places, you know who that is. Uh, today's going to be Michael Bodine from Leesville, Louisiana, is going to be sharing. This will be actually Michael's third year uh, joining us for Middle Valley Conference. So we're always pumped to hear what God is doing his heart. So I'm going to turn it over to him in just a moment. So be praying for Michael this morning. As a man, it's always just a good word that uh, he just uh, brings from the Lord and from the Word. So be praying for him. Just a couple quick reminders. Man, a lot has happened since last Monday we was here. And one of those exciting things is now we actually have Middle Valor community inside of the Gabor map. So if you're not a part of the Gabor and not in the Gabor map, man, we want to just challenge you. Go download that free app in your Play Store. Just punch in Gabor app and it'll pull it up, download it for free. And you can find so much content there with SOCOM, with the Board of Studios. And then you go to the affiliated organizations and you can find Men of Valor Conference there. And inside that, if you join that community, you get some community perks there, some things that we don't offer anywhere else. And of course, you get the first to see any new info coming out. We put it there first. So go be a part of that community if you haven't. Uh, join us there, join us there. And also don't forget registration for Men of Valor Conference 2022 will be increasing on March the 1st. So it'll be going from $40 a person to $60. So, hey, if you haven't went ahead and registered, go ahead and register before March the 1st to save you some money. Like I said, uh, I've tried to put it out there. You get that discount and you don't have to book your rooms and stuff for Ridgecrest. You can do that later. And that price is not increases. Those prices are locked in for us. So, but you can go ahead and save you some money by going ahead and let us know you're coming before March the 1st. So make sure you do that there. So, all right, that's all the announcements I've got. I'm going to pray for us. And then after I do, man, Michael Bodine, just come on and share what God has put on your heart. So let's pray together. Man. Father, we love you. Just thankful for another opportunity to gather as men. As this morning we gather, we just pray that we're challenged from your word, that our hearts would be open to receive. And God, we would not only be hearers of the word today, but maybe we take whatever you challenge us with and go and be doers. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Is my audio good? Awesome. Yes, sir. Good deal. All right, man. First of all, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, it is amazing to see how Men of Valor has grown um, over the last four years, I, feel, I believe, if I'm speaking correctly. And uh, just uh, amazing work, kingdom work, and super thankful to be a part. Um, <clears throat> it is difficult for me, just personally, to... Um, always feel a topic months in advance uh and so i've been praying the last uh five or six weeks over that and god uh, I, I felt like i started somewhere and then shifted a little bit um and I, i'm for me have come back to kind of a basic fundamental um in the heart of evangelism and um some things that god has been dealing with my heart uh and kind of in this area is how to use his word in this area, uh, the balance between grace and discipleship and instruction, because I, I do feel like there is needs to be a balance and all of that. Um, and so I kind of uh, centered on the topic of uncomfortable evangelism, because no matter um, what degree you might have or if you're in the pulpit or not or how comfortable in certain situations you might feel sharing your uh, your testimony and the gospel. Um, evangelism is often awkward uh, and uncomfortable. Um, but it is uh, it is you know the bulk, the main uh, outside of loving others, it is our calling. And so there isn't any getting around uh, as a Christ believer evangelism, but 
<clears throat> if we're being really honest in the context of our human heart every day and, and how we navigate in life, it can sometimes be um, the two words that I kept coming up with are awkward and uncomfortable. Um, but, uh, you know, considering especially sometimes um, how often are you talking to someone who is maybe never a churchgoer, uh, especially when you were in school with them? I know in college I encountered a lot of that. Uh, people who just didn't grow up in church. It was almost like speaking to someone <clears throat> who didn't even uh, speak my language. Um, getting someone to consider embracing a belief system that is so foreign to them uh, it's a, it's a very, um, can be a very awkward and uncomfortable, uh, conversation and situation. Evangelism, um, the helping disciple those around us is counter cultural. In other words, it goes against everything that is normal to, uh, the outside world. But, um, of course there's always a, but in our world, because here's the deal. Um, our anchor of truth and, and really our model for this as we seek to better deliver every day the gospel, better uh, and more be like Christ every day is Christ himself. That's our model. Uh, if we truly study the New Testament and all of Christ's encounters, those 33 years uh, that he walked the earth, in context of today and how we navigate today, Many of those encounters that Jesus had were awkward. Um, if you truly read scripture and read a lot of those encounters uh, and put that in context of an encounter today, they were awkward there. They were very uncomfortable sometimes, uh, but they were beautiful to the believer to read as we see those hearts change. Um, how about his encounter with the rich young ruler? Awkward. You know, if you read that, um, uh, uncomfortable. Um, the woman at the well, one of my favorite, one of the most beautiful stories. But again, his confrontation with her, even though it was filled with grace uh, in a way that most of us don't deliver the gospel, very uncomfortable. Uh, and there's so many others. <clears throat> but it is often in those awkward and uncomfortable moments in life today that we encounter, uh, where that real change happens, where the mind and the heart truly has a moment, even in that awkward space uh, where souls are saved and where hearts and minds are changed. Um, revisit, go back, you know, when you have time and, and revisit, and just read through that encounter with a woman at the well. Uh, and that's exactly what happened there. We must be willing to get over ourselves uh, to get awkward, to have these uncomfortable um, encounters for this very reason, because it's not about us. Um, and, you know, why is evangelism so difficult sometimes? Why is it so uncomfortable sometimes? And uh, something I wrote down um, in my notes the other day was, I think sometimes as men, even uh, fervently chasing God, sometimes we forget who it is who moves the hearts. Uh, sometimes we try and put, replace God with ourselves, not intentionally, uh, but we put way too much of ourself and, and our own feelings into it. Uh, for some reason, you know, we believe that our justification through all this is, is what we do. Let me free you from that. Oh, I see the issue you had. I've been through that. Um, you know, that which there's nothing wrong with that. Testimony is probably our, our strongest gospel tool, but it's not about us. Uh, it's about Jesus. It's about what he's done. He is 100% always and forever will be our justification. And we have to start off with the fact that you and I, we don't save anyone. We're just, we're not that important. Uh, it is because only God um, drawing others to himself through his grace, his mercy, that any of us, um, the chief sinners, I'm raising my hand, uh, are brought into a relationship with him um, and have this, this hope of eternity in heaven. Uh, so we have to keep our perspective in line as, as we have those encounters. Another reason that evangelism 
uh, can feel so tough and daunting um, and uncomfortable sometimes is because it, it's going to reveal how much you don't know. Um, I get approached all these times, and, and I know it's because I have the microphone per se so often as I'm this theologian, and I'm totally not. <clears throat> uh, I don't, you know, I didn't go to any kind of Bible school ever, uh, and I'm, I'm constantly trying to learn more. Uh, but um, I get in these conversations sometimes where it's good, uh, but it, it reveals places where I, I need to learn more. And I know that sometimes a lot of Christians will see this as a negative. Uh, I can't be the vessel. I can't be the mouthpiece. I don't know all of that. Uh, but God does not need us to. Um, it's great the more that we know. And we need, to, we need to see those moments where it's revealed to us as not this negative, which we tend to do. We have this mindset of I can't you know, everything that starts with that, I can't. Uh, but those are moments for us to feel emboldened and empowered in our own personal discipleship, the intimacy that we need to be seeking with him that, hey, it's time to do the work. You are in charge. I am in charge. We are in charge of getting ourselves equipped for the work of evangelism and discipleship. It is easier <clears throat> um, on the surface to stay uninformed. And uh, thus, you know, which I did most of my life, uh, to be honest, unengaged when it comes to this process of evangelism, you know, all those, those little uh, sayings, which are so easy to spit out. I'm no theologian. I'm not equipped. Uh, but there is no place for this mindset uh, in the mind and heart uh, of God's uh, uh, people, men like us who are seeking after God's own heart. And, and wanting to be those vessels, desiring to be those vessels. We have to commit to being prepared for daily encounters and engagements. And that doesn't mean you can word, you know, word for word, quote Romans Road. That'd be awesome if you can. It uh, doesn't mean, you know, you know the Bible front to back. It'd be awesome if you can. But uh, if you did, but, you know, it is about more about your mindset and your heart being prepared to talk about him when the time comes. Uh, James, in uh, James, the first chapter, um, you know, as men, yeah, for, this is always my, my go-to chapter when I need uh, encouragement and a kick in the rear, uh, but verses six through eight there in the first chapter of James, uh, we talk about being equipped and right there in this great book of instruction for us, it says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. And, um, you know, when we're in this mindset of negativity and I can't and that's not me, we are limiting. We're taking our place and we're, we're taking his place. Because we are limiting everything that he knows that he can do through us if we are obedient. Um, so we have to be careful when we uh, hear that whisper of what we can't do because we haven't done this. That's not what he's asking us to do. Uh, that is not uh, the mindset that he wants us to have. When we take a stand, all these fears and hangups and, uh, you know, our, our memories of what we should have, could have, would have uh, in our past. When we take a stand and we declare, um, take a stand and, and declare our desire to be more engaged in our calling, in your calling in evangelism. Yes, every one of us. There, there's those innate human nature things that are always going to be there that we have to overcome. Uh, we're going to discover fears that maybe we never knew were even there. Um, so we have to identify and name, you know, if it's a fear, if it's a hang up or if it's a habit for the first 40 years of your life. <laughs> and yes, that's a little bit of a uh, brief testimony right there for myself. We have to claim that. Uh, we have to take a stand against that stuff. As each fear uh, or whatever it is, if you want to put uh, a word in that blank, has the light of Christ shed on it through your words, through your prayers, and they're going to melt. They're going to shrink away. And, and we're going to start to realize that all of these 
thoughts and mindsets and negativity negativity that we've had, it just pales in the comparison of what he's done for us. Uh, we, we begin to replace that hang up, uh, that wall uh, that has overwhelmed us, that has crippled us, that has had us in the back of the pew or the back of the room forever. It's going to be replaced with an overwhelming sense of what we owe him because of who he is and what he has done for each of us. We begin to replace that mindset and that thinking instead with strategizing. You know, how can I have these conversations? Um, And we start to think about our life and our testimony and what God has done and how we can share that. Uh, another thing with evangelism, and when we truly stand up and lead, and I know every man on this call and probably every man that's going to watch this playback knows is uh, spiritual warfare, standing up, taking a stand for Christ and doing something triggers everything that the enemy, uh, he, they pay attention. He pays attention. Um, and, uh, I, I'm not a believer that everything bad happens to you, man, the Satan's, you know, ev- everything is an attack. No, not everything is an attack, but when you stand up for Christ, you can expect opposition. You can expect spiritual warfare. However, that's again, part of our calling second Peter one, three, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him called us by his own glory and goodness uh you know be prepared another part of being prepared is being ready when they come uh not cowering um just understanding that you're going to get hit you're going to take hits and uh i you know i'd say it but we all know it if if he can't get to me he's going to get to the ones around us um and and I know many of you have been there, are there, you're in the place where you just can't take anymore. Um, but the thing about it is the thing I've learned uh, more and more over time is I'm not able, we aren't able. Um, there are days where I can't take anymore. This is, you know, feels like the worst uh, situation I've ever been in. And, and I, I know I'm speaking to men who've been there. Um, but God has given you every single thing and equipped you with every single thing to make it through and to have that testimony later. He's given you, uh, your faith. Most of all, he's given you your family to lead and to love. He has given you, whether you are tapped into it or not, and I'm speaking to preaching to the choir on this one, but tapped into a brotherhood that will carry you on the days where you simply cannot. Um, And so uh, expect to take a hit when you take a stand and declare that you've had enough. Uh, You're done standing on the sideline. You're, you're done worrying about what's going to be uncomfortable and maybe awkward and, and is going to be strange and weird to the world. Uh, But remember that God has given you every single thing and equipped you to uh, to do what he's called you to do, to lead and, and to be a vessel of the gospel um, in a way that maybe you never have been before. One of my favorite scripture passages as uh, talk about taking a hit and taking a stand and knowing that the enemy is going to um, use you as a punching bag some days is uh, there in Psalm 91. And uh, if you'll look this up with me, um, I, uh, this is my go-to and I know many of you have said it to me as well when, um, you know, when I, I feel like I need an extra covering, uh, when I feel the attack is there, uh, Psalm 91 is, is just a prayer. It's a prayer. Um, and I'm reading from the ESV and I'm not going to read the entire thing, but this is powerful and we need to use this, uh, scripture. We need to use it as a tool. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, uh, uh, the snare of the fowler 
and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. So when you're in those moments <clears throat> of uh, wanting to give up and not knowing what to do and maybe not feeling protected from the enemy's uh, attacks, I want you to open up Psalm 91 and just read it, pray, pray it, and declare it over yourself and your family and your life. Um, it's powerful. Here's a deal, uh, and I'm going to wrap up. Um, it, it's not about how we feel. It's not about our own hangups and our own vices and our own fears. Uh, God demands our adoration, our undy undying commitment. But here's the deal. His will is going to be fulfilled with or without um, anything from us. He wants to use us, uh, and we need to <clears throat> have this undying desire to leave a legacy uh, where we have been a vessel of the gospel. But man, if you don't stand up and you don't uh, make that declaration and you don't fulfill your calling uh, to uh, share what he's done with those that he puts in your lap and in your life, um, he's still going to fulfill his will. But I, for one, and I know that you, that these the men that are here I'm speaking to this morning, um, you're willing to take a stand with me. Uh, so powerful when we stand together. We're in this together. I will always uh, contend, I did not, but I will always contend now and today that it is not about your degree or your words or your knowledge, how effective you are, but it's about your obedience. It's not, a, it's not about the words that come out of your mouth and how eloquent and effective they are, but it's that you showed up and that you are obedient that matters to him, your heart, your desire for him. What is he telling you to do right now? Uh, what is, uh, as I talked this morning, some things that he's revealing to you that need to change uh, and leading to engage in real evangelism and change of the heart? Do the work. I love you guys. Appreciate the opportunity, Eric and team. And I, I believe I'm going to throw it over to Travis. Yes, sir. Thank you. Wow, so good, as always. Two cups of coffee already this morning. <laughs> the second one was much better. I love you, my friend. And um, that, that should have punched all of us a little bit, I think, in the gut. So um, if not, um, maybe we should do a little bit of evaluation. But I love, uh, and I already see a couple of hands up. We're going to get to those. Uh, and I encourage you, if you got some a question or comment or maybe even a confession, throw that hand up. But uh, just what you said there, Michael, the, the awkward, uncomfortable uh, exchanges are where change happens. And, uh, you know, we just need to get over it get over ourselves because it's not about us. Absolutely. God don't need our A game. He just needs us to, needs us to say, uh, here am I. Here am I. I'll do it. So let's go ahead and start with uh, Mr. AJ. I saw your hand go up long before Michael finished. So something powerful is on your heart that you uh, you want to share. So go ahead and unmute. We'll start with you and share what you got. Thank you, um, man. Bodine, <clears throat> excellent, excellent message. Um, it's not often you hear someone talk about the awkwardness of evangelism. You just hear people driving the point home of this is what you're supposed to be doing. And I have to admit that that I was the same way. I, I've always just been, you're just supposed to do it. I don't understand what the problem is. And I'm sure that there are others that are in similar thinking of me of, Oh, I don't have a problem engaging. I always talk them. the thing that I feel convicted of that I want to share with others that again, maybe have my mindset is do not let it be a point of pride that you can with ease, um, be able to talk to others and, and, and engage others about the gospel. Um, because again, it's not about you. Um, it's a gift for some of us <clears throat> to get, uh, everybody's supposed to do it, but the Lord has enabled some of us to be able to do it more easily. Uh, and it was something I learned, uh, in the, in 
my late first marriage as uh, my ex and I were talking one day is I don't understand why people, you know, why people don't just do it. And she was like, not all of us are you. And I was like, Oh, um, but another thing I want to share real quick is even for people like me that, you know, good rhetoric, lots of Bible knowledge, um, understand the ins and outs can even, you know, talk apologetics and everything. There are so awkward moments for us. You're not alone in those awkwardness on those awkward moments. Um, I one time was doing a, it's kind of a dual task. I was doing a research paper for my psychology class and we were supposed to be, you know, we're supposed to come up with our own survey and everything. And what I did is I, I had a survey of, uh, how many people would be willing to engage in a conversation about Jesus? Um, and, uh, those were actually really interesting results, but one of the awkward ones, one of the shocking ones was a guy overheard me talking to someone else about it. And, uh, and then I, I saw the guy kind of looking over and so I was like, Oh, well maybe he, you know, maybe I can go up to him next. And I walked over to him and he goes, I don't want to hear a word about your F in Jesus. He can go F himself. And I, I just stood there speechless. And if any of you know me, I don't, I don't get speechless, <laughs> but, but there was that moment just like, uh, uh, have a nice day. And I just walked because I was like, I don't know what to say after that. Um, so for those of you that do struggle, do know that for those of us that it does come more easily, we still have very awkward moments um, in all of that. Yes. Yes, indeed. That is, that is good. Uh, pastors do, uh, teachers do, everyone does. And, and like Michael said, uh, in that, that example of your ex is a great one. Uh, as far as what she said, well, you know, not everyone's you. Well, no, not everyone's AJ, not everyone's Michael, not everyone's Travis or Eric or whoever, but everyone without exception that knows Christ as a follower of Christ is called to be an evangelist. Nowhere in the Great Commission will you find Jesus saying, hey, I want a select few of you to go out and proclaim the gospel and make disciples, <laughs> right? Uh, he, he called us all to do that. So good, good word, AJ. Seth, uh, we got a couple minutes left. Uh, go ahead and unmute. Chime in. What you got, Bob? All righty. Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, the one thing that, that really stood out, and again, Michael, thanks for the, the word that you brought us uh, was the part where you tell where you're talking about we we tell ourselves that we can't and in my experience if you tell the lord that you can't and i never will well that's the path he's going to set you down is you're going to go do that now and a good testimony behind that is a, a good friend of mine while he was in college um, started serving in the church through the worship band and he told himself I'll never be the lead pastor. I don't want to be a lead pastor. Well, now he's the lead pastor of that church. So just keep that in mind. If, you know, evangelism, something like, I'm never going to do that. Well, God's going to put that in your path and you're going to make sure you do it. Yes. Yes, he will. I learned a long time ago. It's a dangerous thing to say, mm, I'm not comfortable doing that. <laughs> you are setting yourself up for multiple opportunities. Um, all right. I don't see any other hands up and we got just a minute left. So uh, a couple reminders for us. Uh, there's several prayer requests mentioned in the chat this morning. Uh, I'd encourage you to go on uh, real quick before we log out and just see those those two that are there and uh, make a note so you could be praying for those brothers and their needs. Also want to encourage you, Michael mentioned at the start, if you weren't on at the start, uh, to log on to the Gabor map. If you have it, if you don't have it, get it. Uh, because we now as Men of Valor have a community tab page on there. And I think my personal opinion, I think it would be a, a great thing to see a bunch of us get on that community tab and just process this more. Maybe uh, just confess a little bit to each other, some struggles we're having. Um, there's, there's tremendous power to be had in confession to each other. Uh, scripture teaches that. Um, maybe share um, just uh, one area where God has grown you in this area of evangelism, or uh, maybe it's something specifically you just need to ask for prayer, something you need to uh, have God supernaturally step in and 
and uh, just help you with in this area. But I think it would be a, a, an awesome thing to see some of the dialogue there as far as um, just how we can encourage one another and remind one another that we're not alone because, um, you know, we're all called to it. We're all called to it. So again, Michael, thank you so much. And uh, just a reminder, guys, the conference is coming. I am so pumped. I, I made a brief video last week and posted on the app and with some photos and, and a little bit of video. And man, it got me fired up. I know not everybody can make it, but there's something very, very just enriching and encouraging about face-to-face -face with each other. So if you can make it, sign up, uh, do your best, carpool with somebody. Steve Manders, I know you can do it. Uh, you just have to move real quick. Start now and you'll get here. <laughs> um, Steve, I do love you. I would ask, would you mind unmuting and closing us out in prayer, my friend? Right. Father God, I thank you that uh, we just had this opportunity, regardless of where we are, in the world to uh, hear of your word and to learn and grow, uh, learn from each other to uh, grow as well. Lord, just be with us as we go on from here uh, for the most of those guys into their day. Uh, Lord, just bless them. Encourage us all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless.